Is this sushi terrorism a sign that Japan's youth society is in trouble? Yeah, this is going viral right now, obviously on Next Shark, on Yahoo as well, especially a lot of food reddits. Long story short, Andrew, there were two major acts of sushi, kaiten sushi terrorism in Japan that have people saying, man, it's going to change the industry. Do we have a lot of negative influence from these clout-driven pranksters from America? What is happening to Japanese society? There are a lot of questions being asked on the internet right now. All right, so from frivolous to serious, you know the Fung Bros and the Hot Pop Boys are covering this, guys. We're going to go over the main reactions, and then we'll go over our takeaways at the end, so please hit that like button right now. Long story short, Andrew, there was two people. One of them was 16. One of them was in their early 20s. The guy in the early 20s was licking all the soy sauce bottles. The kid who was 16, man, that's the most shocking video. He's got blonde hair. He's, like, licking his fingers. He's being encouraged by somebody off camera. He's, like, touching all the sushi belt on the conveyor belt thing, and it was a big deal, Andrew. This kid is about to get sued for 300 thousand dollars and his guardian is about to get in trouble if you guys know about japanese society it is very proper people follow very strict social norms people do not are generally super not allowed to do illegal things so this is a very big deal and the first major comment on social media was man social media is just ruining society man or was it Social media is ruining Japan society. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's where this future generation is headed, man. Just videos for attention and clout. Now, Andrew, is this true? Uh, now, here's the reason why clout-driven content is dangerous. As we've seen in America, it's very prevalent, right? Where basically your content is based around you getting attention and doing whatever it takes. So that means messing with society, doing things that are often illegal, to be honest, like uh, ruining grocery store setups or like violating little like traffic signs and taking stop signs, stuff that is maybe not violent per se, but it is illegal. And basically that just goes to show you like, oh, wow. Wow, people just want to break the law for attention now. And we're rewarding that. And maybe they're even making money off of it, right. which now is... I mean, I think a lot of people are kind of getting fed up with it around the world. People said, you know, this behavior was disgusting, but we all know the most important thing in this whole thing was how many likes they got. Yeah. Um, some people were asking, is this negative sort of like clout-driven pranksterism driven from American culture infiltrating Japan? Because if you guys know, in Japan in 2023, and they have been for several decades now, they are big American pop culture aficionados. They're very much into Americana. In fact, Ariana Grande was very big in Japan. She used to know how to speak Japanese. And Ariana Grande is one of the most famous cases of somebody licking donuts at the donut store and putting them back. Yeah, I mean, I think that the prankster culture in America is so strong. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess it is probably American culture. But I think one way to stop it is that you have to punish these kids now. Because basically, uh, the pranksters in America, they kind of live under the guise of like, what? Freedom of speech, freedom of expression. And until they're actually violating someone or someone presses charges, then they're not going to like yeah, get pursued. I think that th sometimes they get in trouble, but they are allowed to like keep their social media under freedom of speech. In Japan, I'm sure, and you could argue about whether this is right or wrong, if somebody was making a living disrupting society i'm pretty sure they would be just banned from every single yeah. platform like a hundred i mean i am pretty sure logan paul after all the stuff he did in japan he was banned from japan forever or at least like 10 to 15 Dude, years. he threw a pokemon ball at a police officer yeah. um there was a guy andrew uh that was licking the blue bell ice cream during the pandemic and uh he did go to jail for 30 days in texas yeah and that was at the height of the pandemic when it was considered uh and this might be crazy looking back at it now but like biochemical warfare, right? Because right, a lot of people germs. were like, dude, you're like spreading COVID. Yeah. And at the peak of COVID, yes, that, well, first of all, you should never do that. But yeah, that was even worse. Um, I found a clip, Andrew, from 2003 to your point about American pranksterism and people getting rich off American pranks. I found a clip from 2003 where Canadian American or just Canadian comedian, I guess Tom Green went to Kyoto and put a dildo and a camera on a Kaiten sushi belt and got kicked out of the, uh, the sushi restaurant. No, and he should have been kicked out. I mean, I don't know if he was spreading germs, but obviously you put the dildo on the Kaiten. Even if you put cameras, like there's been tourists who like wanted to film the Kaiten sushi and put a camera on it, but you're just tampering with people's food because basically the way the Kaiten sushi essentially is seen is like that moving belt is like, it's like the kitchen. 
So yeah. you're like going back in the kitchen, even though it's a kitchen that's right in front of you. I know it's kind of weird, guys, but obviously in America, the Kaiten Sushis, they usually have the little plastic cover on top. Right. And I heard Sushiro, where this 16-year-old blonde kid was messing with everything, was like basically the only chain in Japan that post-pandemic was not using the, the tops for the Kaiten Sushi. Yeah. And now, since then, Andrew... They have completely changed their policies. Not only are people capping everything, but some people are completely doing away. Like they still have the conveyor belt, but it is only used for delivery of customized orders. Wow. So literally, these acts of sushi terrorism not only dropped the stock price of Sushiro, it could have completely changed the culture of Kaiten Sushi forever. Because now, basically, uh, the society, and this is the, to another point, Andrew, some people think that the Japanese society is breaking down. They can no longer deal with the bad actors you have to throw this kid into jail yeah you have to do and there it. is uh some japanese comments saying it is always the young kids with the blonde hair they are already deviating from society so much they must be here to disrupt all right this is definitely a boomer comment but obviously you know, as older people, they generally look at anything like tattoos or super dyed bleached hair. Obviously, people of the older generation, they're going to say stuff like this. And I get it. All around Asia. No. I mean, they, they do not like the people with tattoos, piercings, and dye their hair crazy colors. Yeah. For the most part. But it is funny that Harajuku style, which is very outlandish, is also very popular. But I guess maybe it's seen differently. I'm not really sure. So I'm not really sure about this comment. But yeah, anyways, moving on. There's one more comment that was saying like, well, I don't know why you guys love Japan so much. They got high suicide rates and they clearly got their own issues. So why we always put Japan on a pedestal? And I think that that person is responding sort of to like an internet feeling. This is not something you overwhelmingly feel on the streets of America, but on the internet sections of a lot of different Reddits and a lot of different forums, Andrew, people do sort of uplift Japan as what? Like the perfect society, right? Yeah, no, generally Japan is the gold standard for how a society is supposed to run, right? Um, now, whether or not you would actually want to live there or not, but people love visiting Japan at least. Yeah, so. it does very much live up to, it's one of the few places on earth, I will say this, that completely, in my opinion, lives up to your uh, media propagandized image of it. Right. Uh, David, there's another comment that says, well, look how strict Japan is. He'll have a criminal record, $300,000 fine, and his guardian is in trouble. That's how you keep crime low. Swift action. Yeah, I do think that it's very Asian to hold the guardian to be like at fault as well. Yeah. I think in America, you the, the guardian gets in a little bit of trouble, but not really. Mm. Like basically, this person could like sue the people's parents for acting bad. You know, uh, like the Japanese government or the company. All right, you guys, what do you think about this comment? Oh, relax. He's 16. He made a mistake. He's already apologized, and so did his guardian. Let him off the hook, and he probably won't do anything ever again. Yeah, I mean, listen, guys, that's probably more of a Western perspective because let's be honest, Andrew, the, the, the Western country punishment for violating at a Japanese kaiten sushi spot I wouldn't say that it would be zero, but it's definitely not as about to be as harsh as whatever this kid is about yeah, to get. I mean, this I, kid is about to get the hammer put down on him. I, I do think the $300,000 fine is pretty harsh, but I will say this. Um, I believe the term is punitive damages in America, where basically you over punish this one case to prevent this case from happening again because you're right. trying to discourage people from doing it again so you make an example out of him. And so you're going to punish him extra hard where, yeah, should he, does he actually deserve a $300,000 fine? I mean, dude, I don't even, if that's yen or USD, that's crazy, right? Like, like if it's USD. Well, I, no, it's USD because he dropped Sushiro's stock price 5% well, the next day. Well, he's literally going to well, be. he cost that country, like literally somebody said uh, over, whatever changes they're going to need to make to their stores, $300 million yeah. US. You know what? Maybe they'll um, they'll probably give him a deal. Maybe if like he wants to do community service or go to jail for like, I don't know, like 30 days or like, I don't know, a couple months, right? I'm saying, I don't know. I don't know what the situation is. I don't know how law works in Japan, but I guess I can see the, the, the punishment not being as harsh, but because you're trying to prevent this type of thing from happening again and discourage every other cloud-driven person from doing it again, I don't know. You got to come to harm. Somebody said, man, you got to blame it on China. China's always owning TikTok and TikTok always allows these challenges and cloud driven demons to not only infect America, but now even Japan. Okay. So how about this? Why don't people who criticize TikTok for this, which 
I think is fair. But why don't you criticize him and tell him, hey, TikTok, you got to start censoring content. Like content that is flagged or deemed inappropriate cannot spread in the algorithm. Honestly, I think then people would complain to be like, well, why did my content get viewed as problematic? We have free speech here, not like wherever you guys are from. Well, so it's going to be like damned if you do, damned if hey, you don't type situation. Hey, you know, I know that there's maybe more videos on TikTok than there are on YouTube. But even when we upload a YouTube video, sometimes it questions its uh, limited uh, monetization. Right, the ad viability. Right? So then I have to click, hey, can I get a peer review of this to make sure it's okay because I know the content's fine, but for some reason they're flagging it. So then it gets reviewed by somebody. I don't know if it's a human or not, but then it's deemed okay. So I guess there could be some review system in TikTok, but I don't know. And the, of course, the last internet comment was, is Japanese society losing its edge? There are so many kids now, and they just want to disrupt this beautiful thing that we built because they don't care about upholding it anymore. Hey, guys, you know what my overall takeaway is? Uh, I don't think America is the place to clamp down on freedom of expression, and I don't think it should be. But if another country like Japan wants to come down hard on pranksters... I'm not against it. Somebody in the world needs to do that. Maybe it's not America, although uh, certain pranks I do think should be punished in America. But yeah, you know, I mean, uh, so, so I guess some, somebody in the world got to uphold the standard, right? And it, it would be Japan. You know what I think is interesting? There were so many macro questions and takeaways being asked, even from like, you know, obviously some people perceive this to be low, medium, high, big deal. It sort of depends on like how you view food safety and stuff like that. But I think it's a pretty big deal, uh, especially in a country like Japan, where people generally just do not do bad things. They don't steal. They don't shoplift. They don't do things that are just like rampant in America, right? Because they just have a different society. They have different everything. So I guess it does raise a lot of questions if people are like, well, if even Japan's falling apart. What does that mean for us? We've been falling apart. Well, you know, um, and this is just like, I guess a theory or something or just something to think about. You know, I know always people always bring up the high suicide rate in South Korea and Japan, right? These are very controlled societies, lots of rules. No, uh, they do. They do have the, I believe, some of the highest suicide rates in South, all of the developed world. South, for South first Korea world does. rich countries, yeah. it's probably number one, yeah. Yeah, South Korea is number one. I think Japan's a close number two or number three. So it's pretty high. And I think maybe it's because like, Things are so controlled, and because you, you're you're less likely to lash out on other people and become violent with other people and break so many rules that maybe you end up kind of like taking it out on yourself. So I don't know. I mean, that's like there's. I'm not saying that that's exactly how it works, but there there is some like. It seems like there's some correlation or balance. I yeah, guess. Yeah, dude. There's Weird. always. I will say this. There are always unintended side effects of everything, yeah. and there are always pros and cons. And it's very difficult to weigh out. You know what I mean? You have a controlled society with very little crime, and everybody works. And then you've got like you know high suicide rates. And then now everybody's like, well, what's right? What's wrong? Should we yeah. have that over here? Can this system work over here? Does that system only work over there? Anyway, guys, fascinating questions from the comment section, from the Reddit section, from the internet in general. Let us know what you think of these acts of sushi terrorism as Sushiro Kaiten Sushi in Japan. Um, yeah. Is there any macro takeaways or are people just taking internet discussion way too far? Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.